Hello, greetings. How's everybody doing? Um, I get to do a video today uh, in response to a couple of questions that I received um, in the comments of uh, a video regarding uh, Pablo Robledo's uh, Marcella deck. It's a this is kind of what I what I would call a compilation deck, um, being that Mr. Robledo compiled some of his favorite type two. Uh, images and, and features all into one deck. So that's what this is. It's not a true historic deck, but it is pulling from historic sources. There's a bit of further correspondence that Juan and I had um, about <clears throat> how that is uh, the, the use of the term Marseille to refer to all uh, decks that are of the French, Swiss, German, and other origins, uh, Spanish, influence, uh, Italian influence, you know, um, where do we draw the line and why is it, uh, why is it called Marseille? That's also an issue. And it's, it's a little bit misleading because, um, a lot of folks are calling this, what would otherwise be individual, um, branches, um, and historically actually are individual branches of, of their own lineage of images. Sometimes it's, it's very different. It may seem um, similar to the eye at first, but um, when you're when you put together the pieces of the puzzle, and uh, you realize that you know the Visconti images from the 1400s um, is one of the earliest influencers, obviously, because so many of those cards look like they transfer throughout the ages um, into other cards and slowly but surely there's a um, kind of a consensus that starts to happen at um, what cards get what number what order they're in and so on and so forth so this video isn't meant to be a comprehensive history of um, the Marseille. I will put a link to one of Justin Michael's um, videos. I think he did a pretty good job of breaking this down um, as far as some of the history goes. So I'm going to try to answer some of the specific questions that Juan had and uh, we'll start with that. Okay, so from my understanding just to get this um, just to get this off off the, the board here, um, I th I have always understood that the association with this style of card and the fact that it's called the Tarot de Marseille is from um, Marteau's book here, Le Tarot de Marseille. And um, this is certainly where, where I first saw the images. Uh, it, was, uh, it was definitely the, the thing that uh, actually is my first introduction to the idea of tarot at all. My uh, great aunt had the book on her shelf, and um, I thought that the uh, images were, were interesting and cartoony, and I wanted to know more about it, so uh, my great aunt and my parents kind of gave me my first lesson of, of uh, what the tarot was. Uh, and I remember, I'll always remember that. Um, however, I don't read French. I wish I did, but I don't yet, little by little. Um, so years later, when I started getting back into uh, tarot, that was that was my natural, uh, that, that's my natural go-to. And um, I do have a couple of Grimma decks, uh, which are the ones that uh, pa Paul Marteau um, created. Uh, his his uh, source for that was the Convert and um, the Camois family was from Marseille. So I think that's where it came from. Uh, the, the modern day origin of why these all, all, the, all these cards are called Marseille. <clears throat> it is a bit of a misattribution uh, and it certainly doesn't respect the history of all the the uh, the noble 
and uh, the Dodal and the Payenne. And, you know, these are from Dijon and uh, Lyon. And uh, you, uh, I've heard it uh, said that Marseille was actually a, a minor town in the player um, as far as uh, uh, the production of cards. But that changes throughout time because there were different rules uh, and taxations uh, applied to different areas and card makers would move from place to place in order to maybe get around some of that. Uh, there were times when there were raids um, where the government went in and uh, erased uh, wood blocks for some of these uh, card makers if they didn't comply with certain rules and stuff like that. So that um, it was an industry and uh, the government wanted a piece of that money. There's a whole um, bunch of stuff. Actually, that's where some of our history comes from because there are logs about how that went down. Uh, it's all very interesting stuff. So, you know, uh, yeah, I would definitely encourage you to do some research in that area of, of things if that's the kind of thing you like to read about. So there's, there's a fairly new, I think it came out last year, at the end of last year, a an English version of it, uh, of that book. Um, also, um, from what I understand, there's a Spanish, there's been a Spanish translation for that uh, that's been around for a while. Uh, even though it is the source of some misinformation, it's true, but, but uh, you know, um, at any rate, I think the misinformation and I, I think it sort of follows the tarot with a certain mystique everywhere it goes, and I think it probably has from the origin. Probably because it has to do with fortune telling and and long stories, and uh, even if it's just the taroki, you know, the uh, using it as a playing card deck for gambling and, and stuff. Uh, during the course of play, I believe. There was probably plenty of storytelling and entertainment that happened along with it as one person challenges and uh, another person and takes their money and tells the story as they're laying down these these trump cards and things so there will always be there will always be tall tales told in the company of the tarot as a little, as well as a little bit of truth too so but, uh, you know, I've noticed that there are people that do very well with the history keeping, and there are people that do very well with the sortilege and fortune-telling aspect of it. Um, and I'm more interested in the sortilege, frankly. Uh, however, uh, I'm interested in the history enough to, uh, to kind of know, to get a feel for the bearings of it, because it's, it's uh, appropriate and respectful to to know your history about something that you work with and care about. So that's why. Um, however, I never considered myself uh, an expert in the teaching of the history. <laughs> so I'm just delivering my feel for how that works. Now, with regard to um, Mr. Robledo's deck, the Marcella in particular, um, the question was, what deck is this that's being represented? And like I said, it's a combination of decks. But I wanted to be accurate about uh, what we're talking about here, so I asked him what he used as his reference. And uh, he, he answered me. He gave me a reply here. Uh, it is the Conver, the Futraire, the Madinet, the Chauzon, Dodal, Payen, Arnold, Torquedi, and the Burdell. He used all features of all of those decks in this Marcella to make a concentrated type two, which is interesting because the Dodal and the Payen, <clears throat> excuse me, those are type one decks. And um, I have to admit that the f looking at these images he blends them so well that it makes sense in a way that sort of removes your attachment to each of those decks 
individually, if that makes any sense. That's the way I respond to it. So I'm a big fan of the deck, actually, even though it's not historically uh, a, rep, a reproduction of a historic deck per, per se, right? Okay, and as you can see with the um, with the star there, with the matinee on the left, uh, the conver on the right, um, you can see that the star has a much more stern or um, disconcerted look on her face than in the matinee, where in the matinee she looks more pleasant, uh, maybe peacefully contemplating something. Uh, even in the conver, she might even be troubled. And she seems maybe far away from where she is right there, which is interesting for the star, you know, um, neither here nor there. But the personalities uh, of these decks uh, definitely uh, shine through uh, with their own pers unique personalities, right? Um, and we have to consider that uh, the Madinet is being dated at 1709, whereas the Convert is dated at 1760, you know, so... Um, and then also with the, uh, the Valet of Cups, uh, the Madinet again on the left, the Convair on the right. And many of the features are similar. Uh, you know, his cap uh, doesn't, it, it has a feather in the Madinet. It does not in the Convair. And that is actually what tells us that, that it is a cap for him that goes on his head rather than a cap for the top of the cup. Um, that feather, I believe, you know, uh, but this is where stories start to become uh, adrift and um, separate from what might have been intended initially and what uh, appears to us now uh, years and years later on uh, and things that are open to interpretation, which uh, gives us the ability to read things differently in different situations and read each deck individually as a result as well. So uh, his headband is different in these cards. Um, the, the gaze is similar. Okay, uh, there's a sheet that I will share uh, the link to in the um, notes um, from the International Playing Card Society. I hope that it's appreciated that I share that there uh, until I'm otherwise instructed to <laughs> cease and desist or something like that. But uh, it, uh, they mentioned many of the decks there that uh, Mr. Robledo uh, had mentioned, um, and it shows the dates that they were created, so you can get an idea of the historic uh, lineage and where they're from, too. So that's nice. So I'll leave that there. Pablo also does uh, accurate historic decks that are true to the historic um, uh, images, such as the Dodal. Uh, fantastic job doing these. He's um, having them. Uh, there's there's a an art artisanal tarot making shop run by some excellent people. It's called Cartogram. Uh, but, you know, that's an accurate Dodal image right there. That's historically true. So uh, occasionally uh, he, will, he will do that type of work as well. And then, um, I'll, so I'll, I'll share that link in the notes. There's an excellent video done by, I suppose I could say one of my contemporaries. However, she's much more popular than I am. Um, uh, she, uh, where she describes the differences between the 2016 issue and the 2021 issue of uh, the Marcella deck. And uh, there are a couple of Easter eggs there that uh, she was able to uh, uh, spell out for us. So I'll leave that in the link as well. So I hope that's, uh, that answers some questions and um, helps guide you. Um, I do have some of these left. I um, in my inventory and I'm selling them uh, throughout the United States. I did send one to France uh, recently, but uh, anyway, take care. See you soon.